driving what maybe 10 or 15 years ago might have sounded like um, a punchline to a joke. I'm in a Hyundai hot hatch. Hyundai have decided to go down the performance road. They've done it pretty convincingly as well. What I'm in is the Hyundai i30N. Now, as the name suggests, this is a hotter version of the i30 hatchback you'd see in pretty much every supermarket up and down the country. This one, the N stands for Nürburgring, I believe. Hyundai have um, put a performance center in it, the Nürburgring. They've decided that this is where they're gonna test all their performance cars. And they've obviously got into the performance uh, space and motorsport in a big way. Um, they've been in WRC for some time with our own Hayden Patton at the wheel for a, a number of seasons. So they've taken what they've sort of learnt on the, uh, the gravel and tarmac tracks of the world onto the road. And this is the result. It's a 202 kilowatt, two litre turbo up front under the bonnet, 340 odd newton metres of torque. It's got a six speed manual. Now, you can only get this car with a six speed manual. There are no automatic gearbox options and I absolutely love that. That's a real stake in the ground, isn't it? It's um, a fantastic wee hot hatch. When this car was first released, instantly, people were comparing it to a Golf R. Um, it really does kind of take it to the Europeans in terms of its dynamic abilities. On a windy back road, it's got a, uh, the electronic limited slip differential really comes into play and it holds its own on the corners. It almost feels like an all wheel drive kind of vehicle. It feels very planted, very settled. Being a performance variant, it's got a number of different drive modes, not least, the end mode, there's a little checkered flag here on the uh, steering wheel and you hit that and well the whole the whole thing comes alive. Uh, the steering weights up, the acceleration sharper, there's heaps of pops and crackles from the exhaust on the downshift and it is of course a genuine downshift with this uh, manual gearbox as well. It's a really engaging, involving kind of drive. It's uh, not what you'd expect from Hyundai. I mean. Uh, you know, they're not possibly known for performance cars at the moment, but I suggest with this car as evidence, that's going to change in a big way. Hyundai has pulled off a really interesting trick in the last 10 years. They've actually become an aspirational brand for a lot of people. Their uh, run-of-the-mill Santa Fe SUV has really, really sort of got the perfect balance of a a well kitted out SUV at a reasonable price um, but with the sort of engineering and fit and finish that you'd expect from a European brand and I guess part of that desire to be seen as perhaps a little bit more European a bit a little bit more international has uh, led to the development of the N cars uh, cars plural there are, uh, there's actually a Veloster N available overseas we don't get that here at the moment obviously a desire to to create more uh, performance vehicles that really do sort of hold their own and I've got to say you know this car really is quite impressive um, there was a lot of hyperbole when the car was first released around it being a true competitor for things like the Golf R uh, from Volkswagen and um, you know that was from a lot of respected uh, journalists made that statement so uh, you had to take it seriously and I, I must say after couple of days with this thing I can see exactly what they mean. This is a, a, a fantastic point and shoot machine. Does the fastback body style kind of dilute the whole thing? Mm, I don't know it's not my cup of tea when I look at the hatchback uh, that was such a beautifully taut compact kind of car. This still looks great don't get me wrong I love the alloys um, I 
love the sort of the grill. Hyundai's sort of dynamic design. Uh, the front is, is really, really cool. I love what they're doing with their design overall. But if I was going to buy a fast, compact vehicle with a turbo, with a manual gearbox, you know, and those things aren't, they're not, hard, they're not easy to come by, I think I would probably stick with a traditional hatchback versus something that gives me a bit more room in the back. After all, this car is all about what happens from these front seats forward. Whatever happens in the back is kind of irrelevant 80 to 90% of the time.